Hello everyone, today is 10th of March, Sunday, so I hope you have a wonderful day and the weekend. Now it's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update for a day in which I'll share all the main news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. Later on today, about 9 o'clock uh, in the evening Moscow time, I'll have traditional Sunday live stream on my YouTube channel and I hope you will uh, find the time to join the conversation. Of course, I will make announcement about live stream on my Telegram channel and uh, on our community page on, on YouTube. And well, that's been said, let's go through some news and first of all, short summary of the situation on Ukrainian battlefield. According to reports from Russian media and uh, Russian military channels, there was no crucial changes on the line of contact and if we will summarize previous week uh, well, one may say that uh, main um, areas of hostilities between the sides were uh, South Donetsk and uh, Donetsk sectors of the front line. Also, Avdevka, of course, which is uh, used to be part of Donetsk sector, but it's uh, designated as a separate sector right now by uh, for last uh, week uh, or two by Russian Defense Ministry. When it comes to South Donetsk sector of the front line, of course. Main hotspot is um, Novomikhailovka, Novomikhailovka village, which is uh, this one, by the way, this prolonged uh, village. And uh, according to uh, reports, Russian armed forces are controlling about half of this village and the uh, uh, central and eastern part of this village. And the northern part is still controlled by Ukrainian forces. Uh, when it comes to Donetsk sector of the front line, main hotspot is of course uh, uh, Georgievka and Russian armed forces had during the previous week quite significant progress towards Georgievka. Although we of course are talking about local scale uh, developments, nothing uh, in the sectoral level, but still Russian forces had progress towards uh, Georgievka. And also of course uh, one of the major hotspots right now uh, and the entire week on the line of contact was a Krasnogorovka settlement on the southern flank of Donetsk sector. And uh, despite all the attempts of the regime to force Russian units out of this uh, settlement, um, according to some reports, some several uh, brigades, units of several brigades were deployed towards uh, Krasnogorovka by Kiev. But still, they were unable to force Russian units out of uh, Krasnogorovka and uh, the southern part of the village, south side of this uh, railway, is uh, still controlled by Russian forces. Although majority of the village is, of course, uh, under Ukrainian control for now, but not for long, not for long, quite sure about it. Uh, and uh, yet again, when we are talking about some territorial gains, we should always keep in mind that uh, for Russian side, uh, right now, strategy is not about territorial gains. For Russian side, current strategy of active defense is about demilitarizing the regime. And uh, therefore, uh, it's quite understandable and that makes all the sense from Russian point of view to keep uh, more or less unchanged current line of, uh, of contact and uh, demilitarize as many uh, units of the regime as possible on current line and basically by increasing pressure on Ukrainian armed forces, um, basically stimulate collapse of this uh, entity, which will eventually happen. Of course, it may take another month, two, three, five months, but eventually this will, of course, uh, happen. And therefore, therefore, one should not expect some uh, huge advances of Russian armed forces, while uh, strategy uh, implemented on the, on the uh, set of operations is active uh, defense. When we see uh, collapse, total collapse of Ukrainian armed forces, then strategy will shift its focus towards territorial gains and we will probably see at that point large scale offensive operations. And as I said, by the way, this is very crucial for Russian side because we all seeing what is happening with, uh, with the settlements on the line of contact. They are almost completely destroyed. Uh, and uh, of course, it's a. Uh, I mean, uh, if Russian side will continue advances right now, almost every settlement 
that uh, will be in the area of uh, combat will be destroyed. So therefore, it does make all the sense to increase pressure, uh, stimulate collapse, inevitable collapse of uh, Ukrainian armed forces by this gradual increase of pressure. And then when the Ukrainian armed forces are no longer battle capable entity conduct large scale offensive operations it this will minimize casualty numbers of course and same time this will minimize damage on the ground for infrastructure uh, to continue to continue next is of course uh, avdevka direction in avdevka direction main line of uh, clashes main hotspots are of course toninka orlovka and uh, Berdichi directions, um, Ukrainian media outlets, Ukrainian uh, high-ranking officials are quick to state that they managed to stabilize front line on this line, Toninka, Orlovka, Berdichi, but I see picture a little bit differently, exactly because of the strategy of Russian armed forces of active defense. It's not that the Kyiv regime stabilized front line, it's Russian forces allow them to bring more and more reinforcements they are creating new traps now russian forces are creating new traps that's all it is in uh, toninka orlovka uh, berdici directions and just take a look at the area by the way it's uh, vastly vastly uh, fields and uh, that because uh, areas are not really protected movement of uh, ukrainian armed forces are tracked when they are uh, reinforcing their uh, positions in uh, in these settlements and uh, many columns are destroyed even before they are reaching a line of contact so it's a trap that's how i see at least and russian armed forces are are using now this line toninka orlovka berdici as a, another additional trap for ukrainian armed forces and they are failing for this uh, trap and by the way Probably all of you did notice that the Russian Defense Ministry for quite a while now are reporting about huge number of casualties among Ukrainian military personnel in Avdeyevka direction. It's uh, four to five hundred military personnel every single day, just in this one sector, which is a battalion, by the way. So Ukrainian armed forces lo uh, losing battalion every single day in Avdeyevka direction. And main hotspots, as I said, are Toninka, Orlovka and... Uh, Berdichi, after all, exactly in Berdichi area, those uh, Abrams tanks, free Abrams tanks were destroyed uh, in previous days by Russian armed forces and the plenty of Bradley infantry fighting vehicles. No one is counting those Bradleys no more, but uh, because Abrams uh, just now appeared in the battlefield, of course, media did pay quite attention to destruction of those tanks, but from now on, um, of course, uh, when we will receive information that another two or five Abrams tanks were destroyed, attention of public and media would not be as big as it was uh, previous previous week. So yes, this is trap. This is definitely trap for Ukrainian armed forces. And uh, as I said, uh, uh, it's Russian forces that allow allow the regime uh, to kind of uh, to. Uh, not to stabilize, but it's Russian forces that created this illusion for Kyiv regime that they managed to stabilize uh, line of contact in Odeoka direction. And in reality, Russian armed forces created another trap. And according to some uh, reports, some military channels, uh, Zelensky's regime directed some uh, five to seven brigades in Odeoka direction. So all those brigades, by the way, will experience uh, exactly the same that uh, another Ukrainian brigades were experiencing, for example, in Avdeyevka direction just a few weeks ago. But eventually, they were unable to withstand pressure. Uh, and after huge losses, uh, they were basically forced to retreat. No, and they, they retreat not in organized manner. We all see those videos, isn't it? They were just running away, leaving behind their wounded. And uh, I mean, it was mess. It was total mess. Uh, and by the way, when it comes to northern uh, sector of the Donetsk, uh, uh, northern flank of Donetsk sector, main hotspot is of course Krasnaya or Ivanovska settlement, which is disputed between the sides. Half of this village is controlled by Russian forces. Uh, uh, 
western part southern western part is controlled by ukrainian forces but yet again um, these uh, prolonged battles for uh, settlements fit perfectly in russian uh, current strategy and there is no need to rush uh, developments uh, from russian side they can continue battle for uh, Krasnoy or Ivanovsk for another two, three, five weeks, if it's necessary, because uh, longer this battle for Krasnoy continues, more units will be drawn in, uh, more Ukrainian units will be drawn uh, in and uh, demilitarized effectively. Uh, but eventually, of course, Krasnoy will become under full Russian control, and then next um, point of uh, hostility between the sides is going to be a Chisoviar, of course. And also Bagdanovka uh, is uh, another hotspot in Chisoviar direction, but uh, well, Bagdanovka is tiny in compared to Krasnoy, therefore uh, it's not really uh, it's not really uh, gaining such attention from media as uh, Krasnoy does. Although both settlements uh, have strategic meaning right now when we are talking about uh, offensive towards Chisoviar. And northern sectors of the front line, main hotspots, by the way, are, of course, uh, on Seversk direction. It's uh, Belogorovka area, and Russian forces during the previous week were quite successful to further improve their positions in uh, Belogorovka direction. And, of course, uh, on the Zheribets, on the Zheribets river, Yampolovka and uh, Terny, villages um, sometimes some news is coming in that are contradicting each other for example last week this this week by the way in the beginning of the week there were some reports that russian forces entered toninka um, sorry terny village on the left bank of the jeribets river but i did not see any photo or video confirmation of of that information and most likely it was uh, some kind of rumor that was circulating on the internet Russian units are right next to these two settlements, and as I said, the uh, current strategy of uh, Russian armed forces uh, don't really uh, demand uh, any territorial gains in immediate future. They can use the Terni and the Ampolovka as a trap for uh, Kiev forces as long as necessary. But, well, these two settlements are, of course, hotspots, and Sinkovka, of course, on uh, Kupiansk direction settlement that is on line of contact for uh, for many many months now for many many months and eventually of course when time is right russian armed forces will establish control over this village i have no doubt about it and of course next um, point of hostilities will be kupiansk and uh, many reports are coming in about preparations of uh, russian offensive towards kupiansk and kharkov direction in general and therefore Kyiv regime is uh, conducting forceful uh, evacuation or mandatory evacuation from a uh, few, few uh, districts in the Kharkov region. Eventually, eventually, I guess uh, um, Kharkov region vastly will be empty from, uh, from civilians because everyone understands that uh, of course it's only a matter of time and russian side will start its offensive towards entire region of uh, entire kharkov region and this is it when it comes to short summary no crucial changes uh, were reported during the previous day or previous several days it's a uh, it's daily routine at this point on the battlefield artillery duels between the sides regular force operations uh, and local scale uh, skirmishes uh, although by the way of course uh, worth noticing that uh, this previous week was quite successful for uh, russian side when it comes to not just destruction of western made battle tanks uh, but other weapon systems also for example uh, high mars mlrs systems were destroyed and i share on my telegram channel quite a uh, good uh, clear footage of destruction of uh, uh, HIMARS MLRS which costs uh, I guess twice more than uh, Abrams tank and also well, important uh, development was that Russian armed forces managed to destroy quite a big number of uh, air defense systems of Ukrainian armed forces including 
Patriot uh, batteries. Uh, so that was a big success if we are talking about developments in last several days. Um, and that's it. Uh, and that's it for this short summary. Summary. I remind you, dear friends, that if you are interested in, in more detailed uh, information about these local scale skirmishes, military channels are providing great volume of information on that. And if you are not familiar with military channels, under this video in the description box, there is a, a recommendation list of mine of the channels that uh, I try to follow and watch their updates. And uh, among them are several military channels also, so you can uh, use those links there. Uh, one of them being, of course, Military Summary, one of the biggest military channels at this point. And let's go through some other news now. And Tass News Agency's report about ex exactly about Avdeyevka direction. Russian Defense Ministry reported yesterday on progress of special military operation during the previous 12 to 24 hours. And according to Defense Ministry, just on Avdeyevka direction, Ukrainian armed forces lost 450 military personnel. So as I said, on daily basis, uh, on Avdeyevka direction, and mainly on the line of uh, Toninka, Orlovka, Berdichi, Ukrainian forces losing four to five hundred uh, military personnel, which is a battalion, by the way, which is a huge, of course. And if you add all the other sectors, then you will see that Ukrainian forces on daily basis losing on uh, all sectors of the front line combined like two or three battalions a day and, and uh, in manpower and, of course, dozens and dozens of military equipment uh, let's go through some other news we know this report that uh, well this is quite interesting by the way this is quite interesting according to ukrainian media outlet zerkala nideli zaluzhny was appointed as ambassador to united kingdom by zelensky with uh, critical errors when it comes to legislation and norms of uh, diplomacy and i translated uh, i used google translate to share with you Inter this, uh, not inter, but some points from this news. And to be more precise, I will read it if I may. So, the appointment of former commander in chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Valery Zaluzhny, as Ukraine's ambassador to the United Kingdom, was accompanied by an uh, unprecedented violations of diplomatic norms, rights, Ukrainian publications, Yerkala Nideli. In their entire history of uh, Ukraine's Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, no one has ever made a statement in advance about sending agreement, a request for the country's consent, consent to uh, grant all diplomatic privileges and rights to the new ambassador. Such a statement violates diplomatic uh, ethics, all written and unwritten rules of diplomacy. The article states, according to the publication, Vladimir Zelensky's office forced Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba to take this unprecedented step as he was uh, afraid that uh, Zelensky would refuse to appoint, uh, Zaluzhny would, would uh, re refuse to uh, take this appointment of uh, uh, ambassador. At the same time, Kuleba is uh, not the minister who can say no to the president when he violates laws, rules and uh, decency rights uh, the publication also expressed the doubts that Zaluzhny would cope with the new position wondering whether the whether Zelensky would uh, answer the phone when the ex-commander-in-chief uh, when he uh, oh, oh, wondering if Zelensky will answer a call from Zaluzhny uh, when earlier during uh, discussions uh, between each other uh, they, they were starting arguing with the uh, after after uh, several minutes of, of conversation, well, Zerkalan Nideli is out outlining difficult relationships between the two. Uh, at the same time, Zaluzhny himself had, uh, has absolutely no idea what an embassy and the work of the ambassador are. The staff of almost any embassy is a uh, uh, terrarium where they pressure, strangle, cut for every extra pound. This is a submarine with all the ensuing problems uh, team the publication indicates uh, predicting uh, a reality for ex-commander-in-chief with the daily denunciations uh, on tuesday the ukrainian foreign ministry announced uh, their approval of zaluzhny's candidacy for the post of ukraine's ambassador to uk 
the diplomatic department sent the request to London for an agreement. On February 8, early on February 8, uh, Zelensky announced the appointment of Alexander Sirsky as commander in chief of the armed forces of Ukraine instead of Zaluzhny. Before this, Sirsky commanded the ground forces of uh, Ukrainian army. So, yes, first of all, what is interesting that, uh, well, more and more Ukrainian publications are dear to come up uh, even with slight criticism of uh, of steps of uh, Zelensky, which is uh, something new, something new. Uh, and uh, well, as uh, as Zelensky's positions are uh, weakened, further weakened, and uh, this process will continue, of course, I believe more and more media outlets will start uh, becoming more and more critical of Zelensky and his um, policies. And secondly, Secondly, I guess uh, this uh, media outlet of Ukraine uh, is kind of mistaken when, when they, uh, if they think that it was Zelensky's decision to appoint Zaluzhny as ambassador to United Kingdom. Uh, I believe uh, this uh, was demanded. This move was demanded by London itself because it's not a secret that Zaluzhny has. Uh, close ties with the uh, British military, British uh, intelligence service. And uh, it's not a secret also that there were uh, confrontation between Zaluzhny's and Zelensky's camps inside Ukraine. And uh, in my personal opinion, London sees Zaluzhny as a replacement for Zelensky. London persuade Washington to agree on this take. And uh, I guess they managed to gain support from Washington in this regard to replace Zelensky with Zaluzhny when time comes and to make sure that Zaluzhny is safe more safe and secure he is removed from Ukraine now and I believe this was uh, demanded this is initiative of London not necessarily Zelensky himself because most likely Zelensky's camp would want Zaluzhny in uh, in Ukraine so that they can take him out and then blame Russia for it, for example. And I remind you here, friends, that uh, uh, in recent uh, several months, one aide of uh, Zaluzhny was killed in very strange circumstances. Also, listening devices were found in Zaluzhny's office and in office of his uh, another assistant. So this confrontation between two camps already was bloody and already had uh, its uh, casualties. And therefore, um, I'm quite sure it was London's initiative to take Zaluzhny into United Kingdom for a time being. And when time is right, uh, he will go back to, he will be sent back to Ukraine to run for a presidency if there will be presidential elections or to lead the uh, key regime after Zelensky will be removed by whatever means uh, will be deployed by British and uh, US secret services to neutralize uh, Zelensky. But in any case, in any case, uh, most likely Zaluzhny will replace uh, Zelensky in um, before end of this year, let's say. Artists report also that uh, UK is uh, pressures uh, Germany on long range missiles for Ukraine almost on a daily basis. Articles are published on different media outlets about uh, London's uh, frustration with the Germany. Uh, High-ranking officials uh, in uh, UK's military, secret services, uh, government are pressing Germany to go ahead with deliveries of uh, Taurus long-range missiles. And uh, by the way, most likely most likely those missiles, unfortunately, will be delivered to the regime. Um, despite the public statements of Scholz that he is against it. And, uh, well, as I said in my few previous uh, updates, well-informed experts, by the way, already are sharing with, with us with public information that um, Taurus missiles, certain number of Taurus missiles already have been delivered to the regime. So that's that situation on the ground. Most likely, 
this is some political games between the Berlin and uh, London, Berlin and Paris. But when it comes to these long range uh, cruise missiles, Taurus cruise missiles, according to some well informed experts, they already are in Ukraine. Although uh, without uh, assistance of German experts, military experts, uh, Kyiv regime would not be able to use those Taurus missiles. And that's a whole different story. Uh, German uh, militaries that are deployed to Ukraine, of course, need order to start using, deploying these uh, Taurus missiles. And as we know, uh, Storm Shadow uh, Storm Shadow cruise missiles that were delivered to Kyiv regime by United Kingdom are operated and prepared for uh, use by British military personnel and uh, French Scalp Long Range uh, cruise missiles are prepared for by by French military personnel. And we know this because uh, Scholz, it was Scholz, isn't it? Scholz himself, himself said this during the one of the, his uh, statements that it's British and French uh, uh, specialists that are preparing those weapons to be used and are actively involved in these uh, operations against Russia. And Taurus uh, missile is a significantly more complicated one uh, than uh, Storm Shadow, as I understand. It has longer range, bigger, wider uh, technical, uh, wider, wider range of use, I guess. And, uh, well, if Storm Shadow and uh, Scalp has to be operated by experts, military specialists from UK and uh, France, most likely the Taurus long-range missiles also, also have to be prepared and operated by German uh, specialists. But anyway, let's continue. TAS News Agency's uh, report that according to political media outlet, which is US media, of course, uh, France is... Uh, gathering alliance, new alliance, anti-Russian alliance, inside the already existed anti-Russian alliance uh, that has name NATO. And uh, this uh, new alliance uh, is uh, created or will be created to send troops into, into Russia, uh, into Ukraine, by the way, formerly still Ukraine. But uh, give it a time, then the ma vast majority of territories, uh, historical Russian land that is called uh, Ukraine now, will become part of Russia, of course. And, and uh, <clears throat> yes, I mean, the uh, uh, government of France continues these uh, escalatory steps towards, towards Russia. And what is important, by the way, in this uh, political article is that at this point, at this point, seems like only Baltic states, extremely Russophobe, uh, Baltic states uh, are agreed to participate in this alliance uh, among NATO member states. And I remind you, dear friends, that uh, armies of Baltic states probably would not feel even a small stadium. So, you know, just to know what we are talking about here, I mean, Estonia... Latvia and uh, Lithuania can send the entire their army, entirely their armies, into Ukraine. And those armies will last, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks, and that's going to be it. Uh, and uh, it seems like, at least for now, France was unable to gain support, uh, concrete support from other countries. Although there are some rumors that the United Kingdom is also willing to uh, openly, you know, participate in these uh, military op operations against Russia. Uh, but uh, we did not hear statements yet from London. Although everybody knows it's open secret that there are British militaries in, in Ukraine and uh, several hundred of them already have been killed. Like several hundred of French militaries being killed and several thousand Polish militaries, by the way, during the, the special military operation. So yes, French government is not stopping. They want, uh, I don't know what what they want to achieve, but they are demonstrating every single day how hostile they are towards Russia. Okay, we get it, but just chill now, you know. <laughs> we understand you are Russophobes, you hate us. Okay, man, we get it. Just chill, chill now. 
otherwise you may endanger France first of all because you, know, you should not mess around nuclear power France may have some few hundred nuclear weapons but Russia has uh, thousands and thousands of nukes so France is definitely not in a position to mess around Russia man and will never be with all uh, due respect, but France will never be in a position to mess, around, mess with Russia. I mean, this uh, government of France, current government of France, is embarrassment from this uh, Fifth Republic because the world is watching and probably are thinking, you know, what France used to be a country that, uh, I mean, acting like seriously on the world stage, and France used to have a world, world scale leaders, and now they have Macron. This this stupid idiot man, this this, and I mean, and some gay band as a, as a government of France, and uh, they 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 think world gonna uh, take them seriously. I mean, I have nothing against gay bands, by the way. Let them play their music, but uh, in you know, not on the world stage of politics, man. <laughs> Uh, they need some different avenue. <laughs> That's what I want to say, man. Unbelievable, man. This is happening to France. So it's it's kind of shocking, really. Artist report and well, when it comes to this topic of deployment of NATO troops into into Ukraine, well, something is happening in Poland, by the way, among Polish elites, because uh, in yesterday's uh, this headline short short update. And also in my second update uh, on uh, Patreon, I did share information about uh, statements of Defense Minister of uh, Poland, uh, Vladislav Kosiniak, who said that uh, Poland refuses to send troops to Ukraine. So this is Defense Minister of Poland, high-ranking official, uh, top military. And same time, Foreign Minister of Poland uh, begs this idea to send NATO troops to Ukraine. So, which one is then? I mean, both are high-ranking officials. Defense minister is saying that uh, there will be no Polish troops into Ukraine. And foreign minister is saying that, uh, well, uh, deployment of NATO troops to Ukraine aimed uh, the conflict with Russia is not unthinkable. Well, ac according to Radislav Sikorsky, who is an uh, extreme Russophobe, by the way. Uh, probably you all remember when the uh, US conducted this act of international terrorism on uh, Nord Stream pipelines, Sikor Sikorsky openly thanked US for this in his, uh, on his Twitter account, I believe. That was. So th that's how crazy this individual is, man this uh, Radislav Sikorsky. So yes, some kind of confusion in Warsaw. I don't know what the hell is going on with Polish elites, but uh, they should, uh, I mean, talk with each other and come up with one uh, position. Are they sending troops to Ukraine or, or not? Um, but eventually, eventually, by the way, of course, uh, you know my take on the, on the fate of Ukraine. I believe Ukraine will undergo full-scale disintegration. Uh, and the western regions of Ukraine most likely will become uh, under NATO control. And uh, of course, Pol Poland will probably make its claim for uh, western regions of Ukraine that used to be part of Poland before Second World War. So in any case, Poland will deploy its troops uh, into Ukraine. In question is, will these Polish troops or and, and uh, troops of some other NATO member states stay in western ukraine only or will they move towards uh east and south because it does make huge difference if uh, nato troops will stay just in western ukraine well moscow would not care about it that much but if that, those troops will uh start moving eastwards towards odessa region or towards uh, central parts of ukraine or let's say Chernigo, Sumy, Kharkov regions, then, then, uh, well, those troops most likely will uh, end up in the clashes with the Russian forces at some point. 
And that would be dangerous, of course, because after all, we are talking about two forces that have nuclear weapons on their hands and direct conflict between full scale conflict between Russia and NATO, of course, will uh, will uh, quite rapidly transit into a stage of uh, nuclear exchange. Uh, war between Russia and NATO would not be just with conventional weapons, that's for sure. But anyway, let's continue. I want to make this update as short as possible, and it's already 35 minutes. Uh, okay, just headlines then. Uh, Ria Novosti is re reporting that, uh, well, in US, by the way, a governor, or a senator, sorry, senator from uh, Utah, Mike Lee, uh, in his uh, article that was published in American Conservative, uh, make uh, interesting statements that uh, Washington should draw a red line with uh, um, other NATO member states uh, and uh, make it clear that if uh, Europe, European states have to choose between Ukraine and US, and if they will send NATO troops into Ukraine, then US should uh, withdraw from NATO because uh, uh, European states may draw US and Russia towards uh, direct military conflict, which will be devastating for the entire world, absolutely. So I can understand this senator is coming from, but uh, I don't know if he will gain some uh, support among uh, other officials in uh, in US. I don't know. Artists report that ex-Soviet state uh, signs defense pact with France. So President Maya Sandu said uh, the deal with uh, will help toward uh, what she says uh, increasing attempts by Moscow to destabilize the region. Well, Sandu is asset of CIA, by the way, president, so-called president of Moldova, and uh, she is definitely if anybody is de de destabilizing Moldova, it's her and her government and Western ruling elites in general that are in control of these idiots in Moldavian leadership. Uh, so. She can look at the mirror and see the uh, main enemy of uh, Moldova and Moldova's uh, people. Ria Novosti's report and information itself about um, signing uh, defense pact between Moldova and uh, France is also kind of interesting, but, um, uh, but I don't think uh, France will send its troops to fight for Moldova if, for example, Moldova provokes direct conflict with Russia. I just don't see French soldiers willing to die for a Moldova man country that they probably don't even know where, where it is. Anyway, let's continue. Ria Novosti is reporting that Erdogan compare a current government of Israel, including Netanyahu, with the Nazi leaders during the Second World War, Hitler and Mussolini. Oh, strong statements, strong words from uh, from Erdogan. Not the first time, not the first time, but uh, uh, yet again, we clearly see that uh, regional countries in the Middle East are want to stay out of direct conflict with Israel, which is a uh, um, right decision on their part, because uh, one should keep in mind always that Israel is a nuclear state and uh, will use its nukes if uh, Israel is in uh, under existential threat. Uh, diplomatic steps always are better than any escalation, I believe. Artists report that Canadians are target number one for Ukrainian scammers, according to media. Wow, that's kind of interesting. And not surprising, by the way, because we here in Russia know for, for years that uh, they are I don't know, hundreds probably, if not thousands uh, of these uh, scammer call centers in Ukraine and they are scamming people all around, the, all around the world. And it seems like Canada is number one in their list. Interesting, Rian Ostis report that uh, production of wine in Europe dropped uh, 7%, which is a record high uh, for the last six uh, six years and uh, among european states only in russia a production of wine is increasing and of course russia is a european state by the way geographically speaking and european and eurasian let's say russia is a civilization on its own uh, of course uh, 
Uh, and, uh, but yes, Russia is a European state also. And uh, wine production here is uh, on, on increase, mainly because uh, of Western sanctions. Uh, but still, man, these Western sanctions are helping now, in this particular case, Russian winemakers to increase their production and gain more share on the market, which is good for them and good for Russian economy, by the way. And there is a report, this is going to be last news for today's update, that Germany's economy is backbone on the brink, according to Bloomberg. So German family-led uh, companies, traditionally seen as a backbone of the country's economy, have found themselves on the verge of bankruptcy, Bloomberg reported on Saturday, citing business figures and industry analysis on the ground. Well, that's quite unfortunate news, of course, because, uh, well, family-led uh, companies are a backbone not just for German economy, uh, small and medium companies, businesses are backbone for uh, every economy or supposed to be backbone of uh, every economy in this world and it is unfortunate man when i see this kind of information i always think that it's it's ordinary people by the way like us that are hurt and it's 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 never okay it's never good german government may be extremely anti-russian and they are but uh, it's german government by the way we should always uh, distinguish from each other i mean they are people and they are governments that don't really listen to people and their opinions and therefore, I don't care about German's government. They are, uh, I mean, they are horrible people. But uh, when it comes to German society and society of any other country, by the way, I, I only have good wishes for them. And uh, hopefully, German economy will somehow manage to deal with the current issues. But for this, they need better government, man. They need better government and better policies. Because after losing uh, cheap or, or uh, not necessarily cheap, but uh, traditional, let's say, uh, energy sources from Russia, of course, economies now in the West are experiencing some issues, especially in Europe and Germany is uh, especially being uh, number one economy in, uh, in Europe. And I will end this update now, if I may. Still quite long video, by the way, but... Uh, okay, it is what it is. Hopefully you will find this update interesting, informative, useful. Uh, and if so, please click that like button, leave some commentary, just about anything, any topic you want. And, uh, and uh, please share links to my videos or my channels with your friends on any of the platforms that you are using actively it, it might help uh, to reach wider audience and further develop this uh, small media project of mine and uh, if you think this channel is interesting useful informative and deserves to exist please consider to support my work with small donations through paypal buy me a coffee or by subscribing to my patreon page on which by the way i have some extra content on regular basis all the links are in the description box uh, and in the pinned comment this is it for now and before i go let me remind you that today nine o'clock this evening i will have live stream on traditional sunday live stream on my youtube channel and uh, well, uh, i invite you hopefully you will join the conversation have a great day and take care